Hey guys, welcome to another one of those really exciting videos and different videos because you see this video is live, unscripted, I have no script in front of me or anything, and uh, you will see my live reaction unboxing this brand new 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, as you can probably tell, I'm pretty excited for this unboxing. Now, that's because um, I've always wanted to upgrade or downgrade to a 13 inch MacBook Pro for my 15 inch. Yes, I'm still using that 15 inch 2019 MacBook Pro. Uh, that I got as a replacement for my broken 2018 full video about that here. Um, anyways, 13 inch is basically the perfect device for me since I don't really edit videos anymore. Um, and the most intensive task that I do is photo editing in Photoshop or Lightroom. And even that's just on a one by one basis. Uh, so just a few times a week occasionally. In that case, I just need a really good keyboard because that's what I do all the time. So I need something that's portable, has a great keyboard. So now, uh, I really want to try this out. I've been waiting for that 14-inch MacBook Pro. We've seen loads of leaks. Unfortunately, that's still not out. So yeah, until then, here's my unboxing and my first impressions with the MacBook Pro 13-inch 2020. Also, this is the high-end uh, $1,800 model, the one that comes with 4 Thunderbolt 3 ports, 10 generation Intel processors, all that good stuff. So let's unbox this baby up. Okay, so all of the Apple notebooks come in this brown box, the shipping box, and you even have a pull tab, which is quite handy. So now let me just remove it from the shipping box. And there you go, MacBook Pro 13-inch 2020. So on the front of the box, we have an image of the MacBook Pro from the side. Now, here's a fun fact. This is the MacBook Pro 15-inch 2017 box. And as you can tell, they're pretty much identical from the front. So the 16-inch MacBook Pro, it did get a new design for the box. That's because it's a new laptop, kind of. Um, this one is basically the same. At least Apple is considering the same as the previous generation. Okay, so taking a look at the box, uh, on the top we have MacBook Pro, which is actually written in the same color as the MacBook Pro that's inside, so space gray in this case. Then we have an Apple logo, then we have MacBook Pro, and then we have another Apple logo. All of these matching the color of the MacBook Pro that's inside. Now, I went with a space gray because why not? I've always had space gray. I still kind of wanted to, I don't know, I want to try silver. I've tried it a few times uh, with some previous MacBook Pros, 13 inches in the past. But it's one of those things where I still prefer space gray. I got bored of it but I still prefer the darker look. Maybe that's just me. And then on the back of the box, we get uh, the serial number, which unfortunately I cannot show you, and then also a listing of everything that's included inside uh, and the specs of the machine. So this is the baseline higher end $1,800 uh, model. We get 16 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, Intel Iris Plus G7 graphics, and all that good stuff. By the way, guys, we've actually done a very detailed video with 25 things you probably didn't know about the MacBook Pro 13-inch 2020, so definitely give it a watch. But until then, let me just open up the package. Uh, we actually have this pull tab here, which is quite nice. So we don't need a knife anymore. So excited. This might be my very next laptop. I'll talk about the specs in just a tiny bit. So let me just lift the top. And oh, the box, this box is, I don't know if you can tell, uh, it's significantly thicker than the previous ones. It feels yeah, it feels uh, very, very bulky. But anyways, here we have the MacBook Pro 13 inch, which this is so much smaller than my 15 inch. Love the size. By the way, uh, okay, it's definitely heavier than what I remember a 13 inch MacBook Pro was. And that's because it did get heavier. Full video about all those facts here. Now, in terms of what we get inside the box, it's pretty straightforward. So we get the charging cable, USB Type-C to USB Type-C. We get the manual, so the booklet. Okay, so inside of this booklet, we get the quick start guide, which basically tells you everything about the ports, the keyboard. That's pretty much it, so it's very straightforward. Um, then we get the warranty and the safety guide. And of course, this is pretty cool. So we now get a pair of Apple stickers that actually matches the color of the MacBook. So we get space gray stickers, whereas before, uh, we used to get just white stickers. So thank you, Apple. I complained about this for so many years, probably like six years now. The fact that we didn't get color matching Apple stickers for some products. Some of them, like the Mac Pros, uh, did get color matching Apple stickers, but not the MacBook Pros. The MacBook Airs got them, but again, not the MacBook Pros, not the iPhones. So 
that's a pretty good start for consistency. Okay, now aside from that, we get the charger, which is a 60, I believe it's a 61 watt power adapter. Yeah, there we go, 61 watt power adapter. Then we also get the brick or the adapter. And fun fact, you can actually use different adapters. You can buy a US adapter, this is the UK model. Uh, you can buy a European adapter, so you can just change these uh, when you're traveling. Just have a few of these and yeah, it will work. So. That's pretty cool. And if you buy a Lightning to USB Type-C cable, you can actually use this charger to charge an iPhone much faster than with anything else. So, fun fact. But yeah, that's pretty much everything in terms of the box and the contents. Now, let's move this to the side and let's take a look at the actual MacBook Pro. Okay, so as a size comparison, here's how it compares uh, against the MacBook Pro, my MacBook Pro 15 inch. So pretty big difference in terms of the entire size, making the 13 inch significantly more portable. And you know, you can use this on a tray, on a plane or a train and all the kind of stuff. So significantly more portable than this one, but this one is significantly more powerful than this one. So the real question is, can I trade that performance for this more portable MacBook Pro? And I should be able to. Also, I did get the new iPad Pro. Well, this is the 2018, but I did get a keyboard by the way. And we did a full review of this iPad Pro and the keyboard right here in case you missed it. Uh, but yeah, this was actually my home computer that I was using all the time, even for scripting. And the MacBook Pro is quite a bit larger than the iPad Pro 11 inch with a keyboard. So yeah, so many devices, it's pretty tough to, uh, to pick one. Okay, so now it's finally time to take a look at the MacBook Pro itself. So let me just remove the plastic wrap. It's definitely heavier than you would expect, by the way. There we go. We have this protective sheet on the display. And the moment you open up the lid, by the way, the MacBook Pro turns on. And this applies to all the models of the MacBook Pro from the 2018 model to, well, to present. Okay, now what I really, really want to try now is this keyboard. So obviously I've tried it on a 16-inch MacBook Pro and the 2020 MacBook Air but this would be the laptop that I could be using as my daily driver. Uh, okay, I'll just set this up first. Right, so the MacBook Pro is now set up, and so I did try the keyboard, uh, obviously to set up my account, and I gotta say, it's really good. Testing, testing the keyboard on the new 2020 MacBook Pro 13 inch. Pretty good. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm gonna switch, guys. I think I'm finally going to upgrade, or in this case, downgrade to the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And I'm actually thinking I could literally use this baseline, baseline model with the four Thunderbolt 3 ports as my daily driver. Yes, I am dropping to four cores from eight cores. I'm also dropping to 16 gigabytes of RAM from 32, and I'm also dropping to 512 gigabytes of storage from one terabyte. But I think I can actually make this work. Mostly because when I don't have a very expensive device with me, I mean, this is still quite, you know, quite high, 1800 pounds, but my 15 inch, when I got it was, I think it was just over 4,000 pounds. So significantly more expensive. And when I have a device that's not as expensive, I don't know, I'm a bit more comfortable with it and just taking it to places. Um, I don't feel like I have to watch over my shoulder <laughs> all the time, uh, so to say. So, you know, I do enjoy having a less, valuable device and this is still quite end quite high end and i think i can actually make everything work including that 512 gigabytes of storage now if you're thinking of buying one of these new MacBook pros something that you need to know is that well there are actually two models now so we have a low-end version of the 13 inch MacBook pro and then the high-end version this one uh, of the MacBook pro the low end starts from 1300 pounds or dollars and the high end starts from 1800 dollars or pounds. And this model comes with four Thunderbolt 3 ports compared to two, so that's how you can tell which one is which. Um, the keyboard is the same, the displays are the same. Performance-wise, this one comes with Intel's 10th generation processors. We also get much better graphics on this, by the way. Uh, we also get much faster RAM, by the way, from 2133 megahertz to, I believe, 33,000, what's this, 3,100, 3,733 megahertz, which is also LPDDR4X memory. So overall, this is a better machine in pretty much every single way compared to, performance-wise, compared to the baseline 13-inch Pro. However, it is a bit in a tough spot because you see, the MacBook Air, that's the MacBook for anyone or everyone that wants a Mac. That's a laptop, it's really, really good. 
Um, and then we have the baseline MacBook Pro, the $1,300 one, which is almost the same as the MacBook Air. Like in some cases, if you just care about single core performance and easy tasks, uh, the MacBook Air is going to be more powerful. And then we have this one, which if you spec it out, it will be almost as expensive as a 16 inch MacBook Pro or even more expensive, um, you know, at which point the MacBook Pro 16 inch is a much better choice. Uh, just because you get significantly better performance, you get six core processors, eight core processors, dedicated graphics. So if you care about performance, get a 16 inch. Uh, if you just want a Mac book that, you know, does the usual tasks, get a MacBook Air. Okay, so in that case, who is this MacBook Pro for? Um, it's a bit of a tough one. I would say if you need a bit more performance than the MacBook Air, it is not significantly more powerful than the MacBook Air, by the way, um, then, and also portability, then I would say that it's a pretty good choice, basically for what I need. I do occasional Photoshop in this case. Most of my work involves scripting, emailing, organizing, transferring files, that kind of stuff. So pretty much just management and lots of writing. Reason why I need a pretty good keyboard and also something that's portable for when I'm traveling. And fun fact, since you only have one GPU inside of this one, an Ingrid GPU, uh, the battery life will actually last you longer. And this is because on a 15-inch MacBook Pro, lots of apps, by the way, they force the dedicated GPU. And unless you have a tool that shows you which GPU is being used, uh, which you can use, for example, uh, GFX Status to monitor that, unless you have an app like that, you wouldn't know when your dedicated GPU is being used. And the battery life when the GPU, the dedicated one is being used, is significantly worse, by the way. But yeah, so far, um, pretty, pretty nice. Love the escape key. Yeah, love it so far. So thank you for watching. This was a uh, pretty, you know, straightforward video. I'm definitely going to test this over the next few weeks. So definitely stay tuned for a more detailed, proper review, just like we did on the MacBook Air, by the way. And if you want to learn more about this MacBook Pro, definitely check out our 25 things you didn't know video that we posted earlier this week. So yeah, up until the next video on the MacBook Pro, let me know in the comments, what video do you want us to make before the full review? Do you want to see a comparison versus the MacBook Air, maybe a comparison against the iPad Pro, or anything else? But yeah, this has been pretty much it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. So, okay. Peace.